from his players. There's so much running through these players' minds. How do you channel that for today's game? The same swag that carried you all season long. They came into the season with the notion, we can be the national champions, the best team in HBCU football. They didn't do that a season ago. Unfinished business on both sidelines. It's a national championship game coming at you. First time since 2016 as North Carolina Central here back in the Celebration Bowl as we send it down to Tiffany on the sidelines. Hey guys, North Carolina Central quarterback Davis, Davis Richards, he had his left hand taped up during warm-ups and I spoke with head coach Trey Oliver about that. He told me that's because his quarterback broke his finger on that non-throwing hand in their last game, but they are not too concerned about it. He did have surgery two weeks ago, but Oliver told me he is built different. Well, thanks so much, Tiffany. It's something that we will keep our eye on as Davius Richard, the MEAC Offensive Player of the Year. He has been a steady presence in the pocket, but he could also do a little something like this. The dual-threat quarterback out of Bell Glade, Florida, has really helped to carry this Eagle team. When you say dual-threat with Davis Richard, one of the strongest dual-threat quarterbacks that I've seen. I mean, he's a strong kid overall, but can bench press the gym, whatever you put on there. But when he runs, he runs very strong and hard, similar like a Steve Air McNair type of strong, where he can run through arm tackles. His team with second and five at the 40-yard line of Jackson State. Eagles coming in with a 9-2 and two record. Champions of the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. Richard to pass, finds a man, E.J. Ricks, he's wide open, big play into red zone territory. And he picked that one over who? Travis Hunter, who was on the coverage. Well, Jay Walker wants to talk about my legs. Well, Jay Walker, talk about my arm. Perfect ball placement on this throw where only Hicks was going to make that catch. Big play on the opening drive for the Eagles. Well, when we talked to Trey Oliver before today's game, he felt like E.J. Hicks, Devin Smith, his two wide receivers, would have a big game. And after that 42-yard completion, the Eagles find themselves in striking distance. The ball at the Jackson State 18-yard line. Latrell Collier in the backfield with Richard. The handoff and right at the mesh point, meeting them quickly is Jeremiah Brown. About the layoff that they've had. North Carolina Central hasn't played in a month. They use that time to rest and get well. They don't look rusty coming out on a very impressive opening drive. Well, Trey Oliver had his team ready to go, said, hey, look, it took us a little time to get back into fundamental football during that stretch, and then we spent the last couple of weeks game planning for Jackson State. And this is what Jack State does. When you get them backed up against the wall, man-to-man -man coverage, they will try to out-athlete you and bring pressure on the pocket. Richard looking to his left and his right. Underneath is Devin Smith. The pass is complete and down at the 15-yard line. I'll tell you, Davius Richard not liking that tape on his fingers, as Tiffany Blackman told us, had surgery during that time. And... He just decides to just throw it off. I don't need this anymore. Hey, non-throwing hand. Hey, if I feel comfortable without it, don't let anything distract you in a game of this magnitude. Can't blame the young man for deciding that he wants to feel comfortable. Now on third and seven, an area where this North Carolina Central team has excelled and quickly taking a timeout is timeout. Jackson State coach Prime rallying his troops Jackson telling them to come back to the sidelines. They'll talk it over and we'll step aside here as well from Atlanta. This is a full media timeout. Timeout to retape his broken finger. Tiffany Blackman told us he had surgery on his non-throwing hand. And so now that he is set and ready to go inside the red zone, important third down upcoming for the Eagles. Man to man coverage, JSU showing you they want to bring Cameron Silman Craig, number seven, their version of the Honey Badger, to cause some chaos in the backfield. Let's see what North Carolina Central does to protect themselves. Richard with time looking, and that was nearly picked off. Whoa. Getting in front of that one was Travis Hunter. He was 
hungry for it. And he normally doesn't miss. You know, Travis Hunter, the nation's number one freshman prospect coming out of high school, plays offense and defense. But look at the reactions. He's jumping on the route before E.J. Hicks was going to get there. That's why he can be such a difference maker on both sides of the football. A player who really thrived playing both ways at Collins Hill in Swanee, Georgia, in this Atlanta area. And that brings up fourth down. Adrian Olivo on to attempt the field goal in the 32-yarder goes through and so North Carolina Central getting on the board first on their opening drive netting three points and this is what they do finding ways to score when they're in the red zone 48 out of 55 times and Jackson State will now find a way to try to answer here but important for what North Carolina to Central North Carolina Central to get themselves on the board and relaxed Yes, and to know you're going against the number one defense in FCS football, you have to let them know right away, we're going to have the ability to move the football. We're going to be able to do what we want. We can protect our quarterback. We can execute our game plan, put Jackson State defense on their heels, coming out with an opening drive to put points on the scoreboard. We saw what Davius Richard was able to do. Let's send it down to Tiffany to introduce us to Shadur Sanders, the SWAT Offensive Player of the Year. Well, guys, I spoke with Jackson State Offensive Coordinator Brett Bartoloni before the game, and he told me that just from watching Shadur Sanders this week from warming up in this game, too, that he said he's the most locked in he has ever seen him. He even cited yesterday's walkthrough that he was just so detail-oriented, and we know just how much this game means to Shador. When we talked to him this week, he said he dropped the ball in last year's celebration bowl, and that they've had this game circled all year long. You know, this week more than others, you know, all the distractions that have taken place with Jackson State, the young man basically representing two universities, that's going to be put to the ultimate test today. How much can he block out the noise? And one thing we know about Jackson State, they've done a great job blocking out the noise ever since Coach Prime set foot on campus. That's Kevin Coleman on the return from inside the five, and Coleman spun down and brought down around the 23-yard line. Well, Shadour Sanders will take off one uniform and put on another at Colorado as he will follow his father to Boulder. But meanwhile, you heard Tiffany talk about that unfinished business, okay? Complacent last year. That's what he told us. The motivation, though, he said, not only to get back here, but I didn't like what I saw for myself last year. Uh, you know, it got rattled a little bit. A lot of teams use that as the formula on how you disrupt Jackson State offensively. The key for him, he can throw the ball. He's deadly accurate. He can throw it all over the place, make all the throws. It's going to be, can they protect him? Can this offensive line protect him? If there's one weak link for Jackson State, that's not a strength. It's the offensive line, which is average at times. Sadiana Wilkerson, who has had himself a great season in his first year with Jackson State. Now he's been the difference maker. Well, coming up next on ABC, we'll have two more bowl games for you. Washington State squares off against Fresno State in the Jimmy Kimball LA Bowl, presented by Stiefel. And then at 7.30 Eastern, SFU takes on BYU in the New Mexico Bowl, both games on ESPN Deportes and the app. Pass complete to Dallas Daniels. Daniels, who has been a primary target for Shadour Sanders this season, the graduate coming over from Western Illinois, and now you see something that has to give. When you're looking at this matchup, you think on third downs, North Carolina Central outstanding in this category. Jackson State's defense does a great job, but here holding strong was the defense from North Carolina Central. In the trenches, third and short, you trust your offensive line to be able to run and get the football, not going to happen. That's always been the big difference between the SWAC and the MEAC interior line play. And look at all the red jerseys getting to the line of scrimmage, winning their one-on-one -on -one battles to prevent JSU from picking up the first down. Jaden Taylor and Cole Jones in on the stop, so that will bring on the punter. Brandon Codrington standing at about the 27 yard line, a very dangerous return man. Now the penalty marker comes out. Got him to jump off sides, and you can tell that was by design. North Carolina Central had a pump block on.
Billy D. Williams. <laughs> not to be mistaken with the actor. He's got his call start. <laughs> Offense, 32. Find your goal lead. Race point down. A little bit of surprise. It looked as if Central jumped off sides, but maybe they were drawn off. And you saw the Jackson State offense expecting to come back onto the field. Their whole unit was ready to take over. Instead, it'll back up the Tigers five yards. Look, they got caught cheating. <laughs> so they were going to try and draw them offsides from the beginning in a punt formation. Didn't fool anybody. Didn't fool the officials, let's say. Moving back five yards. Sam Johnson awaits it. Boots it away. High sky kick. And Brandon Kydrington picks it up off the bounce in a number of white jerseys around. And do you like that decision? Kind of risky right there, Jerry. Risky one there, but it was a very short kick. Took a very favorable Jackson State bounce. At that case, I think what you do is after it bounces like this, you become a shield. Make it, get down, duck, because you got incoming special teams players on the way. Eagles ball. Cricket Wireless. Smile, you're on Cricket. In part by Disney on the Yard. Visit DisneyOnTheYard.com. And Tax Act. File for less and get more. Let me say it together. Okay. When I say now, all y'all say give me my theme music. Now. Give me my theme music. Let's go. Let me tell you, that's one of the hardest ways to walk out of a locker room. You play a little mystical bump, and here I go. And when he drops that theme music, everybody gets up and stand up there. Mookie Collier, Latrell Collier, the North Carolina Central running back, picking up a first down after that 12-yard game. Yeah, Mookie Collier gets downhill in a early, and right away we're seeing offensive lines starting to take control of the line of scrimmage, pushing around this defense. Now, Jay, I, I've, I've got to look at Robert Mitchell, the right guard, the MEAC offensive lineman of the year, helping to lead that unit up front in the trenches for the Eagles. Richard taking off on that right side, and Richard spinning off the defender and still going. Another first down. Across the 35. This is an old play we used to run back in high school called quarterback sweep right. Flag football. What do you do? They're going to shift the line. You got a quarterback that can run. Look at big number 55. Robert Mitchell lead the way. And we told you Darius Richard can run the football like a running back. He runs that hard. No need to fake it. No play action. Give the ball to Richard. Let him run downhill. Good job by Robert Mitchell. Well, I'll tell you this. We mentioned Robert Mitchell, the MEAC offensive lineman of the year. Davius Richard, strong. Robert Mitchell, even stronger. Those two guys hit the rate room like nobody's business. And you see them manhandling the lineman up front to clear space. Now first and ten. A little trickeration as E.J. Hicks got his man. And Davius Richard is there inside the ten as he's brought down. 40 yard completion, excuse me, 31 yard completion. I'll tell you, that was special there because we don't see a lot of trickeration from North Carolina Central. But see, what North Carolina Central knows, they know they're playing man to man coverage. When you play man to man coverage, you don't account for the quarterback. They're using Jackson State's strength against them. You want to play all man to man, who's going to guard our quarterback? In the running game and we see in the passing game. Some question of whether there will be rust for a team that's been off for nearly a month so far. Answering that question with a resounding no. Scored a field goal on their opening drive and looking to punch it in. And Davius Richard is able to lunge into the end zone. Six three, two hundred fifteen pounds coming at you. Hard running, dual threat quarterback Davius Richard showing you the leadership, capitalizing on the drive. And Tim, they're trying to establish something. They're not believing all the hypes. All week we knew North Carolina Central couldn't wait to get at Jackson State. Normally Jackson State's delivering blows, and we want to see how they respond. Central saying we're going to deliver the first blow and in a big way. Starting eerily similar to last year's celebration bowl, they took on South Carolina State. 
And now you can see the look on the face of the fans from Jackson State. Tell Not gotta, much to celebrate them. or cheer about. Tell them you got to pace yourself when you're in the ACL. Look like you're going back too hard with a distraction. Hope this football team can wake up. They're going to need them in a hurry. Right before your eyes, America, let me introduce you to Davius Richard. This is what you need to have to play quarterback. Starts with throwing the football. But in today's college football, you must be able to run the football and then show your athleticism by catching the football. And oh, to be the great one, you have to finalize the drive by scoring the football over the goal line. Davius Richard can do it all. 14th rushing touchdown of the season for Davius Richard as we sit it down to tip. Guys, this North Carolina Central sideline was electrified after that Davius Richard touchdown run. And when I spoke with running back Mookie Collier about Davius, he told me not only is he the best teammate, but that he gives us this extra edge on the field because of his intensity when we try to match that. Well, Kevin Coleman, who's staying on his feet on this return, and Jackson State will have their best starting field position in this one. But you go back to Davius Richard and the type of leader that he has become in his junior season with this North Carolina Central team already making that immediate impact that you talked about in the anatomy of today's quarterback. And what you want in the big game is you want your star players to give you the knowns. What are the knowns? He's going to run for a touchdown. He's going to throw for a touchdown. He's going to distribute the ball and run hard. Davis Richard so far giving head coach Trey Oliver the knowns, the things we know he can do. Meanwhile, Shador Sanders and the Jackson State offense back on the field. Sanders looking to pass. A quick out to Savion Wilkerson. Game of about four. And, and Wilkerson's going to be a key. He was the, to me, he was like the MVP of this offense besides Shador Sanders. The transfer from Delaware State came in, rushed for over 1,000 yards. They struggled running the football season ago. Wilkerson stepped on campus, won the starting job from day one, and he's been rolling ever since. Averaging about 154 yards per game on the ground. Much improved running game and better offensive line. We'll see how they hold up against the defense from NCCU and Shadur Sanders showing off his legs as well, running for the first down. Pushed out by Cole Jones, and yeah, a lot of... A lot of room there on that sideline where clearly he was out of bounds and penalty, penalty markers fly out. Yeah, add 15 yards to the end of the run. And one of the things we've seen from Shador Sanders this season compared to a year ago, his ability to run the football more. Always been able to run the football, but now knowing when to call his own number, oh yeah, that drag down by Cole Jones. The Easy call. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Defense. 17. 15-yard pull. He had it on the end of the run. Automatic. First down. Hey, remember, Jay, in the pregame, emotions running high from both teams and the chippiness we saw on the field. Yeah, look, you see Aubrey Miller on the side of NCCU, like, hey, what are you doing here? And, of course, you know, some, some tippers flared up. And Savion Wilkerson finding daylight, staying on his feet and finally brought down. Savion Wilkerson, we talked about him coming over from Delaware State. You see down there on around the 40-yard line there, little Shevin coaches came in and give credit to both schools' coaching staff. They got in there in a hurry and some of the players, hey, we're going to settle this on the field. No unnecessary penalties and you see Coach Oliver let these guys know, hey, we're going to play when the whistle blows. Got him. Jackson State running game. They beat you throwing the football. This is a good job by Shadur Sanders, little semi roll to buy him some time. And DJ Stevens, who's been fantastic for the Tigers all season long, able to slip behind Max Uren and get him to the end zone for the score. Four plays, 64 yards down the field on this drive, and Alejandro Monta kicks it through for the extra point. DJ Stevens, second team, all swag and praised by his coaching staff. Because what 
He found a little slip of the defense. And, and, and the key is when you're the tight end there, you got to make yourself small and, dis and disappear. So it's all about eye discipline. So you're going to see Stevens come from his tight end spot here, get a clean release with the wiggle, and that's how he's able to get open. But look at the eye discipline. Peeking at the backfield, at the quarterback. Uh-oh. You left somebody open. Middle of the field. Most dangerous man. That's too easy a throw. That's why you need eye discipline. You see number 54, Max Jordan. Mike Linebacker caught looking in the backfield, looking at the quarterback. Great play design by offensive coordinator Brett, Brett Bartoloni because he knew if I just take Shadour from his normal spot, move three yards to the right, that's going to throw him off a little bit. That's why they were able to get open. Jay, we've seen, obviously, a few possessions, keys in this game for the remainder of the way. Offensive line play here. Let Shadur Sanders throw on rhythm, he will tear you apart. He's not proving this wrong. We know that about him. And you got to figure out how to follow, how to solve this Davius Richard riddle. You know, you have to make him one dimensional. You can't let him run, throw, pass, all the stuff he's doing right now. Make him one dimensional. Well, this season, All State will celebrate every field goal and extra point made by participating universities by making a donation to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, All State. You talked about Davius Richard, the green-eyed bandit, as you've deemed him, Jay. And in the early going, how does this Jackson State defense, number one in all of FCS, slow down the Eagles' QB? Don't let him run. You know, make him beat you with his arm. But that scary thing is he throws the ball very well downfield. They've got some playmakers. But JSU wants to play man-to-man -man coverage. That normally throws a quarterback's timing off. Taylor getting the carry, his first of the ball game, and a number of white jerseys there to greet him. Well, let's see how Jackson State got here in our season review brought to you by Cricket. Well, this is what they've hung their hat on all season long, the defense. You see, just giving up 11 points. Wow. Yeah, and, leading the nation in sacks, too. That's the key. They're not just in that category. They're leading the category. Number one in the country in those categories there. Impressive job by defensive coordinator Dennis Thurman for Coach Prime. Now second and eight for the Eagles. Richard finding some blocking. Zai Simpson creating a little crease there. Brought down by Aubrey Miller, the SWAC defensive player of the year. It'll bring up third down. Or NCCU coming in to this drive. Averaging about 12 yards per carry. Here, this is where they have excelled this season on third downs. Best in the nation. 0 for 1 so far this afternoon. defense 15 different players with a sack this season loss of six and more impressive they did this with the four-man rush we know they like to blitz and bring pressure only four jerseys collapsing on the pocket great job by the front four i think that surprised them when you see that coach we don't need to blitz i can beat my man one-on-one -on -one. we're playing for a chip a championship that is well, if you're just tuning in, Jay Walker, Tiffany Green, Tiffany Blackman down on the sidelines. Both teams coming in with some unfinished business, seeking their first ever cricket celebration bowl win. This is an HBCU that. National Championship. Coach Prime obviously wanting to go out on top, try to cap off a dominant season, best record so far in school history. And let me tell you this, there's been so much conversation and talk about Coach Prime, his presence here. Obviously, he was a big reason of bringing Travis Hunter to this team. And look, feeling good and feeling loose before the end. That little Uzi Vert move or whatever. Yeah, the little rock, that swing. Yeah, Travis Hunter is feeling it. Nearly had a pick six earlier in this ball game. And I like what they say about Travis Hunter. He's a pro. I mean, they said it all the time, like, we don't deny it. He is a pro.
Deion said he's better than I was when I was in college at his age. That's saying something. Kind of all of Coach Prime in his playing days as primetime Deion Sanders punting it away. Here's Velarde and Willie Gaines with the fair catch after that 40-yard punt. The question is, what exactly did Coach Prime look like? Do we, do we, Which Prime? Do we, do we see the phases <laughs> of Coach Prime? Well, this is from the Atlanta days, because this is where it started for him, from Florida State to the Atlanta Falcons. Yeah, he decided to, you know, main the curl. Yeah, that's hanging right? with Hammer, Prime right there. <laughs> and then that was phenomenal right there for the Braves, played in a pro football game and a World Series game. And I think that's more San Francisco 49ers Prime right there. And that right there. That's clean shaven. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And now the mature version of Coach Prime. Travis Hunter, oh, oh, it's bubble that was popped out. Kobe Warrior nearly got it, but the Eagles do recover it, and that's Manny Smith coming up with it. Yeah. Using Travis Turner, we know when he enters the ball game, they want to get him the football. North Carolina Central knew that as well, so they tried to have him get the ball. The really uh, field is a fumble. The backfield, a little sweet toss. And just a good hit on the football. That was Jawan Hudson. Hudson. From the cornerback position. Big play by the Eagle defense. You almost think that Hunter didn't see him in time. Late reaction. Too late to protect the football. And the Eagles capitalize. I'll tell you this. The Eagles defense has been solid all season long. Forced to turn over now in seven straight games not necessarily a strong point but coming up with a crucial one here in this opening quarter giving his team the best field position with the ball at the 32 yard line of jackson state fresh set of downs davius richard looking looking feeling some pressure escaping the pocket and a penalty marker is thrown out Personal foul, chop block. Number 55 and 76 of the offense. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay, first down. And two of the best you're going to see in the conference there. Simpkins, the center, along with Robert Mitchell, the offensive lineman of the year. And chop block when you've got one person engaged high already. And you see him come across to the left, so. Tough call right there. Two penalties, 30 yards for North Carolina Central. Backs them up near midfield. Picks in motion. Richard quickly gets it away, finds Mookie Collier. Collier trying to run behind is blocking and picks up a good bit, a gain of 10 there. And I like the play selection by Matt Leone, the offensive coordinator for North Carolina Central. This Jackson State defensive line wants to get after the quarterback. Well, what do you do against an aggressive D-line? Slip screen, slip the running back out of the backfield, pick up a good chunk of yardage there on that first down after the penalty. There's Matt Leone looking on from the booth, the offensive coordinator, and really helping to produce the fifth best offense in terms of scoring offense in the FCS, averaging 38 points a game is this North Carolina Central offense. Davis Richard with plenty of time, continuing to look down the field, trying to escape, and some more laundry comes out. Back near the 45. This will be a hold. It will be a hold on Corey Bullock, the left tackle. But you know what's happened? Jackson State's abandoning the man-to-man. -man. They're playing zone. And by them not playing man-to-man, -man, I think it's confusing North Carolina Central. We just knew that Jackson State was going to come out and do what they do, man-to-man -man coverage all over the board. Now they're going in the zone. Holding, offense, 51. 10-yard penalty for the previous spot. Replay, second down. 
Bullock is a good one, but Richard, you'll see him right here, number 51. Once Richard escapes and decides he's going to leave the pocket, that's where the hold's going to occur. So you got, the, you got the blocking, but right here when he leaves, he holds on to him, does not let him escape, doesn't ungrasp. You see the flag come out. Happens all the time when quarterbacks start scrambling late and the quarterback or the offensive lineman does not recognize the QBs on the run. Now second and long. Board zone coverage. Again, dumping it underneath to Mookie Collier. And Collier tripped up. Aubrey Miller was there to bring him down. And, and big third down right now for Jackson State on defense because if they can force a punt or even a field goal try after a turnover, that means the defense has the back of the offense. After the turnover, not allowing a good team to capitalize. Watch number seven, though. Silman Craig, he's that guy that makes it go. They've got him in the middle of the field right now from a strong safety position, meaning they may try to bring some pressure. Going for it. And into no man's land. The closest receiver was Devin Smith, not on the same page with his quarterback. And the punting unit will trot onto the field for the Eagles, so a big hold there to your point, Jay, for that Jackson State defense. I'm really surprised that Jackson State utilizing the zone coverage. It's working, confusing this Eagle offense, allows them to have more eyes in the backfield, so you kind of take away the running threat of Davis Richards, so good adjustment defensively for JSU. And look who's back to return this punt. It's Steve, at least standing at the 10-yard line. That's Shiloh Sanders, the other son of Coach Prime. And the special teams unit had an opportunity. Bounces over the head and a touchback on the punt. Well, folks, good time to remind you that our bowl quadruple header on ESPN rolls on with Florida taking on number 14, Oregon State, followed by Rice and Southern Miss. Then we cap off the day with North Texas and Boise State in the Frisco Bowl presented by Serve Pro. All three games are also available on the ESPN app, so you can watch anywhere. Watching this game here, we saw the cheerleaders there. Let's give, let's give a little something, something, give them a little flavor. What do they say, North Carolina Central? Eagle pride? Amplify. Amplify. They're in the lead right now in this game right here. You see that? Soar, Eagle, soar. They love their Eagles down there in Durham. You act like you've been to the Bull City once or twice. Come on now, you know that. <laughs> We've got some smears from Dane's Chicken and Waffles, show us some Southern hospitality on the road. Good college town there. More than Duke University is located in Durham, North Carolina, by the way. Good time. The pass complete to Santee Marshall. Correction of Jackson State receiver misidentified here. And that's Kevin Coleman. Kevin Coleman, high recruit out of Missouri, four-star recruit. So Travis Hunter got a lot of the headlines, but Coleman was a very good get for Jackson State as well. Hollywood looks with the completion near the first down marker, and it's good enough. They'll move the chains. And once you start letting Shadur Sanders throw on rhythm with that timing pre-snap regain where he's getting rid of the football quick, then you're in trouble. You have to confuse him at the line of scrimmage and don't let him pick you apart with his pre-snap read. Six of six so far in this ball game. One of the best completion percentages, feeling pressure, and that's the first incompletion of the game. And playing in front of a who's who type of audience, not only Jackson State fans and SWAC fans, MEAC and Central fans, but how about the commissioner of the NFL, Roger Goodell, in the building as well. We saw him a little bit earlier talking to number of folks down there on the sideline. Been a fantastic year for HBCU football. All eyes have been on it. And an event like this just tells you what it's all about. These young men deserve this opportunity to play on national TV. They played great football all year. But it was, I will tell you, when I came out of the tunnel and saw the commissioner, I was like, is that the commissioner? <laughs> <laughs> What's up, commish? Now, he's not just here to support Jackson State or Coach Prime, the Pro Football Hall of Famer, but there you see Charlton Goodell, okay? So he's got family 
has a part of Jay State. Yeah, that, that's his nephew, right? Mm -hmm. That's his nephew there, Charlton Goodell, here representing JSU. Tell you a quick story while they turn this out. So talking to the commissioner, he had some good stories about how many years he was scouting HBCU football. That is the end the of the first quarter. He said, I had to scout HBCU football because Jerry Rice was going to sign with the USFL. <laughs> <laughs> Jay's story time will continue on the other side of the break. Meanwhile, if you're just tuning in, Commissioner Hugs Love. His team, though, Jackson State, this is our nephew playing for him. Down by three. Sanders getting on a charter, going to Colorado, accepting the head coaching job. Many people have chimed in, had something to say about the move. Whether you agree or disagree, it's happened. A and B, everyone will have all eyes on Coach Prime as he tries to complete not only a perfect season here, but what the next chapter will look like in Boulder, Colorado. Let's send it down to Tiff. What you got? Yeah, well, we know that next chapter will likely be busy because that's what Coach Prime does. He stays busy. And we've seen him go back and forth between Jackson State and Colorado, but multitasking is nothing he hasn't done before. As you guys mentioned, he played for the Falcons, played for the Braves. He told us that he is built for this. I've been multitasking my whole life, and he's always had several things going on. So that's why all of this has not been a distraction for this team. That's what they say, guys. All right, thanks so much, Tiff, as Sam Johnson punting it away. And I'll tell you this, Jay, you heard Tiffany mention about the distractions, how you limit them, but we had an opportunity to talk to an HBCU great yesterday and Rod Broadway, who won three national championships, won with North Carolina Central, and his take on it was interesting because he says, well, there may not be the external extractions, distractions that they're worried about internally, it could be a different story. I mean, absolutely. You know, I told him that this team is used to dealing with distractions. He said, not distractions like this. Not when players are going to feel abandoned by the coaches because you know the coaches are leaving after this game is over with. So I thought talking to Hall of Fame coach Broadway said, hey, they can put out the noise, but you know those are some hurt kids in that locker room, and it works both ways. And I think not only that, Jay, and even in talking with Coach Prime, he even admitted how uncomfortable it was to kind of switch ball caps and, you know, paraphernalia and gear going back and forth between Jackson State and Colorado. Yeah, I mean, he does a lot. And, you know, as a coach, you know, you move up the ladders of the profession. The one thing I wondered, how was Shadur Sanders going to handle that? I mean, he went out to Colorado with his father, was almost introduced as the Colorado QB of the future. But you're still Jackson State's QB. You still have some unfinished business. And so far, it doesn't seem like it's affected Shadour. But we'll see how it plays out the rest of this game. Meanwhile, Jay, I'm going to take one of your lines. You know who don't care about none of that? North Carolina Central. North Carolina Central. <laughs> <laughs> they, they don't want the distractions all you want to. They want to get them on the football field. And start to see that offensive line take over. And a good look there. And the new... He'll be the new coach after today of Jackson State. That's T.C. Taylor, wide receiver coach right now. He's got an extensive background with the university. And congratulations to T.C. But, you know, not the circumstance you want to get it, but congratulations to him. He's worked hard for it. And many will be curious to see what this new era will look like for Jackson State. Meanwhile, North Carolina Central moving the ball well down at the 41-yard line. Aubrey Miller taking down the ball carrier after that pickup of five. Meanwhile, the NCCU sound machine getting hyped, getting ready. You know, it, it's relatively quiet inside the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. You've got the NCCU sound machine on one side. Trey Oliver's like, that's cool. Look, I, I just need my guys to lock in, focus, and do what we got to do on the other side, the sonic boom of the sound for Jackson State. Jackson State starting to crowd the line of scrimmage again, going back to that man-to-man -man coverage. Look, a little surprised when they had so much success with just a four-man rush and everybody keeping their eyes in the backfield. But JSU going JSU. They're going to bring pressure whenever they can. Just up there down the scene. And the 
pass is incomplete to Devin Smith. Brings up third down. You know, and I always say that JSU is going to JSU. What I mean, they're going to try to out-athlete you. They feel they have more athletes. They can play man-to-man -man coverage in your face. You're going to have to beat us one-on-one. -on -one. Now, the answer to that is hit him with the deep ball. Hit him with the deep ball. Hit him with the crossing routes. And we've seen Davis Richard miss on a couple deep shots, which is not like him. Well, will that noisy linebacker, Aubrey Miller, be on the field so far yet to convert a third down? Again, we told you coming in, the best in the nation in converting. Five yards to gain. Got to get to the 36. Davis Richard with time. And in and out of the hands by Devin Smith. That would have been good enough for a first down. Instead, fourth down upcoming. What a throw. I mean, what do you want me to do? You want me to throw it and catch it? I mean, that's a perfect throw right between the two and the two. Would have been a big play there. Davis Richard showing you the arm strength there. Drop ball by Devin Smith. It's going to stop the drive. That was rocking. But look at the leadership right here with Davius Richard going over to his wide receiver, Devin Smith, assuring him, saying, look, man, I'm going to go back to you. I've trusted you all season long. I'm not going to stop right now. Absolutely. And that's the leadership. When we talk about Davis Richard, strong, strong arm, strong leader, strong character. Speaking of trust, Jay, he's been entrusted the keys to the Jackson State football program. T.C. Taylor will be the new head man. And this is when he was announced earlier this week. T.C. Carolina Central. That was Lightning Martez Carter. And then coming back, this one will tie it up to Quentin Atkinson if they make this field goal. But oh, it's blocked. Reason why they had to go back 15 yards. The excessive celebration and Broderick Fobbs and Grambling State able to hoist that trophy. And the Eagles now with another chance to perhaps bring home the trophy. And they've been thinking about that for years. You know, a lot of people call it the excessive celebration bowl. That win by Grambling, surprisingly, the SWAC's only win in the cricket celebration bowl. Only team to do it, Broderick Fobbs. Talk about Devontae Kincaid, the quarterback, and Mr. Excitement, Martez Corner, the running back. When you think about this celebration bowl and how it was long and has been long dominated by the MEAC, in particular, it was North Carolina Central, excuse me, North Carolina A&T, who used to be in the MEAC and now has moved on conferences. Rod Broadway closed out that perfect 12-0 season with the Aggies in 2017. And now Jackson State looking to become the first ever 13-0 HBCU National Champions. Trailing by three here. Lost it up. Kevin Coleman, the first over and proof. And I don't know if they're going to catch him. The Bikers are on. Taking it to the house. When we asked Shador Sanders to describe Kevin Coleman, he gave us two words. The kid, because he's a youngster, and fast. And you knew once he caught that ball and it became a foot race, he was going to win it. Speed to burn. Impressive drive by Jackson State. Backs against the wall. They got down the field in a hurry. Started on their own four-yard line. 96 yards. Just three plays, and the SWAC freshman of the year got busy. You give Shadur Sanders time. He's going to find the open man, hit him in stride. Hey, I'll race you to the end zone. Game, set, match. Get jiggy with it, homeboy. Do you buy McDonald's? Coke Zero Sugar. Is this the best Coke ever? And Truist, when you start with care, you get a different kind of bank. Truist Bank, member FDIC. 
what a gorgeous facility this Mercedes-Benz Stadium is here in Atlanta. Atlanta. ATL, Shorty, the capital of the South. So many monikers here in the A. Can I use my new word I learned this year? This building, this stadium, it hit different, oh. don't it? it this, 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 this stadium hit different. You gotta know <laughs> when and how to use it, Jay Walker. Uh, are you saying the Mercedes-Benz Stadium doesn't hit different? Oh, it, it slaps. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fumbled over the end zone and kneeled down for a touchback. Let's take a look at tonight's playbook brought to you by Coca-Cola. Well, let's figure out how Kevin Coleman got open, so wide open on that play. This is by great design. Two things you got to watch. First, let's identify Coleman here from the slot. He's going to make his way across the field. That's just the beginning of the route. As he's going across the field, you'll see it right now. You see right here? That's a little bunch formation. He's going to run through the wash, through the rub downfield. They got away with a little pick 20 yards down. Field. That's how he got so wide open to make it a foot race to the end zone. If you're not cheating, you're not trying. Great job offensively by the offensive coordinator, Brett Bartoloni, designing that play. And you said he ran about how many yards on that About one? 100 yards on that one. Start on one side of the field on the 20-yard line all the way across. He's young. Well, they say he's the kid. Fresh legs. Meanwhile, the pressure coming in the face. And who does Davius Richard go right back to after the dropped touchdown or catch he finds Devin Smith and that's a leader you know, take what the defense gives you good job by the offensive coordinator calling the play designed to get the ball to Smith because you're going to need him to make some plays in this ball game pick up a three now second down Richard Finding 22 in Maroon once more. And right near the first down marker. We'll see where they spot it. Guys, what you were just talking about with Davis going back to Smith on that play, well, offensive coordinator Matt Leone told us that's what great players do. They create confidence in those around them. And when Davis is on the field, well, everyone around him believes that they've got a chance, but he really helps to elevate all of his teammates. You're exactly right, Tiffany, and in talking with the coaches, that was one of the areas where they said, hey, this is the greatest area of growth for Davius Richard this season is his ability to lead. And right now on third down, did Davius Richard get the surge up front with that offensive line? And they say, yes, he did. So the first third down converted here for North Carolina Central. Sometimes simplify your offense. Third and one, short yardage situation. Quarterback, one of the strongest guys on the field. Run it up the middle. It was not there, but he willed himself for that yard needed for the first down. He's worked on his body and overall strength, especially during that offseason. Thomas Carroll, the strength and conditioning coach, helped to change the culture in the weight room for this program. Luki Collier on first down. You know what, Tiff? This is out of character for me. I'm feeling something special in this game. Neither one of these teams is going to back down. And that's the way it should be. You know, they come in here ranked number one and two in the power rankings. Central feels like they're the best team in HBCU football. Jackson State has carried that mantra all season long. And they've worked out the kinks. Now let's play some football. And where you say it, Starts first up front in the trenches. Historically, MEAC teams have been more physical along that offensive and defensive line here. Trying to protect Davis Richard on second and four. And the handoff to Mookie Collier, gain of one. Let's check out our college football look ahead brought to you by Truist. Uh, Number of games for you to choose from as bowl season kicks off. New Mexico Bowl, that's going to be an interesting one. SMU taking on the Cougars of BYU. Jay, anyone in particular you're interested in? Yeah, actually, SMU, BYU. Okay. You know, two things. One thing about BYU, they're tough. They're a tough team taking on the speed of Texas and SMU. Third 
103 here. The crowd getting into it. Davius Richard with one of the women along that left side identifies it, slides, and picks up the first down. Afterward, you see the late flag coming out and a personal foul call is likely on the way. Yeah, and wonder who this is on. One of the white jerseys came over and took a shot at Davis Richard at the end of the run. And they're going to call this every time. When you give yourself up as a quarterback, don't touch it. I mean, he did it the correct way Davis Richard did. He did the electric slide, the as we play. call it. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Defense. And you see, once he escapes, Number right 31. now he's giving himself up. Don't touch him. 15 yard penalty uh, added on to the end Jason of the run. Jason Mercier automatic. rolled First him down. to the ground. And that's exactly why they have that rule. Mercier is a defensive lineman. Any chance he gets to get a quarterback on the ground, using his weight to inflict damage, can't do that. Spoken from a former quarterback. <laughs> get off me. A little bias there, partner. You know what I'm saying? They always protect the quarterback. Always got to look out for him. First and ten. Dangerous, throw. dangerous throw in DJ and a marker out around the 42 yard line. Maybe a holding on Thomas, the right tackle. Looked like he got beat off the line of scrimmage. Holding offense, number 83, 10 yards holding, replay first down. The central. And you see right there, trying to engage, and that's actually called on the tight end. Luke Bracey got beat on the initial first step. Call for the hold right there, and that's where the speed is. I always say that about Jackson State. You know they have athletes, but they're so fast, and you don't realize how fast they are until it's game time. How do teams handle the speed of Jackson State? Richard did exactly what he wanted to do. Still on his feet, and what a run by Davius Richard. The balance that you saw from the NCCU QB. Yeah, and he made Cameron Silman Craig miss, one of the best tacklers in the conference. You'll see number seven come up. Make him, give him a shake, and the balance, the strength, the squats during the offseason paying off for him, able to maintain his balance and pick up big yardage to make it second and short. We talked about the terrific defender Cameron Silman Craig is, but winning that battle was Davius Richard, who you said spends, and we all know, spends a lot of time in that weight room. <laughs> and Davius Richard running it again, picks up. The first down brought down by Aubrey Miller. Reminder to our viewers, if you want to see both bands, you can see them in their entirety on our ESPN at the Sonic Boom of the South and the NCCU Sound Machine. We'll get ready to go. There's so much gamesmanship, so many battles and competition, the game within the game, and who's going to win the battle of the bands at halftime? What's that Jackson State band name again? The Sonic Boom of the South? I mean, don't say it like that's normal. That's a bomb nickname right there. The <laughs> Sonic Boom of the South. That's one of your favorite yes, band names, Jay, as you've ranked in your Give Me Five throughout this uh, season. Call you along that right side and call you with a good pickup of seven yards on the play. Geronte Davis making the tackle. North Carolina Central now inside the red zone. And the offensive line starting to do damage. Left guard Zai Simpson got a pancake block pulling around there. Mookie Collier, good running behind him. It's a good group right here. The strength of this offense, when you talk to the coaches, our offensive line. They've been called for a couple holding plays today, but getting off the ball, attacking, opening up running lanes, good group. The coaching staff saying that's the difference between last year's team went six and five and this year's group nine and two are playing for the national championship. Complete to EJ Hicks and Hicks staying on his feet. Herman Smith was the first to get to him, but dancing around, pick up a bait. Yeah, and when I talked to Dennis Thurman, the defensive coordinator for Jackson State, I said, Just give me some keys. He said, there's one key. We have to tackle. And we've seen a couple missed tackles allow North Carolina Central to pick up first downs in big plays. They need to wrap. 
they're getting to the point of contact, but they're not bringing down the ball carrier. After jumping out to a 10-0 lead, Jackson State was a 14-10 advantage, but now long drive, more than six minutes taken off the clock, 11th play upcoming. And first and goal, Jamari Taylor gets away from Auburn with another missed tackle exactly. and into the end zone. Aubrey Miller Jr. missed the tackle. How frustrating it must be as a defensive coordinator. You're making the calls, putting your players in the right place to make plays, make tackles, and they're just missing. Uncharacteristic from this Jackson State defense who we told you coming in, the best defense in all of FCS. And the MEAC Defensive Player of the Year couldn't come up with the important one as Taylor able to shed it. And now Olivo giving Central a 17-14 advantage. Jamari Taylor saying, I will not go down. Let me scoop Wilson into the end zone. Play in a position to make a play. Aubrey Miller's going to have the vision to sense out where the ball is going, but once you get there, you got to capitalize. He sees it, senses it, does not capitalize, does not make the tackle. Missed tackle equals touchdown. Frustrating as a defense when you can't bring the ball carries down. You got to finish. And that's been a theme that we've heard from Coach Prime all season long, and we go back to that SWAC championship. We talked to him, hey, like, what do you need to do to continue to cement your legacy. Hey, we gotta finish. They were able to do it there. Can they do it here to have that dominant season punctuated with an exclamation point here in Atlanta? Good special teams play, and I'll tell you, that fires up the Eagles. And to cap off that thought of finishing, Dion told us earlier, in my generation, you don't get up from the table unless you finished your meal. Story time. Up, up, get up, get up, get up. Oh, yeah. Sonic Boom of the South, South is all up in it. And see, I always tell you this, Tip. Like, as a quarterback, we think about stuff like this. Like, I want to strike up the band. See, right there, you saw it. I wasn't exaggerating. As a quarterback, we think, oh, hit the pass, let's strike up the band, have a good time. Important drive for Jackson State as Savion Wilkerson gets the handoff. And you saw on that graphic there, more than six and a half minutes eaten off the clock on that last North Carolina Central drive. That's about the same amount of time that Jackson State has had the ball in this first half. The Jackson State showing the ability to score quickly. You know, but right now, this is Shadur Sanders' time. You know, how is he going to end this half? You lost a little bit of momentum when you took the lead. You got it. Central took the momentum back. But right now, this, this is what your big-time quarterback does. How do you manage closing out a half? Can you take your team down there and tie up this ball game or get the lead going into halftime? It's star time right now. Remember, Jackson State does get the ball to start the second half. They were moving with a little bit of tempo off of those couple of carries from Savion Wilkerson. Now first and ten from the 30. Shadur able to squeeze through and slide for a yard. And now for today's AFLAC trivia question, Jackson State is currently 12-0. Who was the last FCS team to go 13-0 in a season? Mm. I mean... North Dakota, Dakota State. State. You never go wrong <laughs> guessing North Dakota State when it's FCS football. Yeah. We were in the Fargo Dome for their FCS quarterfinal. And that one completed. Mm. Felt it on that reception. Khalil Baker, first time we've called his name, the defensive player of the year out of the MEAC, delivering the hit, but more importantly for Jackson State. First down. Injury timeout. Injured. That was a collision. Yeah, it was. You see Coleman going to the sideline. A little gimpy. 
in between Baker and Jones. Listen in. Mm. My coach used to say, Coach Wilson, mm. throwing leather down there. Well, Coleman in pain. Jawan Hudson on the other sideline being helped up for NCCU, the starting cornerback. All right, well, we can get our answer now, Jay, as to who was the last FCS team to go 13-0 in a season out of the FCS. And our AFLAG trivia question reveals North Dakota <laughs> State as yeah. the answer. Again, the Bison yeah. out of Fargo. And how about this? The Bison are on their way down to Fargo, Texas, as they like to call it this time of year. They advanced to the FCS championship game. So it's like clockwork. You can set your watch by it. North Dakota State postseason, C in Texas. That was Matt Ince's first year as the head coach of North Dakota State to be able to win a national championship with the legacy that Craig Bowl and others created there for that FCS powerhouse. First and 10 wide open, Shane Hooks. And Hooks, uh-oh, it's on the ground. And we'll see how they whistled it. I didn't hear a whistle, Jay. Oh, they're calling him And they're down. saying that he's down. The ruling on the field is the runner was down. Result of the play is the first down. I mean, take a look. I mean, it, I'm thinking that ball's starting to move. Uh, you know, and ideally you're taught don't blow the whistle unless you're sure. Let it play out. No time to review it as Jackson State quickly getting up to the line. Excuse me, every play is reviewed, but Jackson State moving quickly. 14-yard reception to Dallas Daniels. Again, trying to engineer this drive, going into the locker room, using a little bit of tempo. Shador Sanders, 13 of 14 so far this afternoon, 178 yards. Pump fake, pulls it down, decides to run, has room. No stutter step, thought about going down, gets a few more yards. And inside the 10 after that run of 18. Knowing when to call your own number. And a great job as a quarterback. Watch the pump fake. Look at hard right. The pump, nope. Tuck the ball away, find it. Then I'm not done. You're not tackling me on the 25-yard line. I got to get this ball inside the 10. Really added that element of running the football, becoming a true dual threat quarterback. Look at the accuracy, 13 of 14. For the season, a 70% completion percentage for the sophomore quarterback out of Canton, Texas, and the handoff to Savion Wilkerson, and a couple of yards up ahead. You said this is Shadour Sanders' time. And with 36 seconds, or 35 now, ticked off the clock. The timeout time is taken by Jackson, Jackson State. State. They're second. But the maturity that left. we've seen from Shador Sanders over his couple of seasons with the Tigers, winning the Jerry Rice Reset Award given clock. to the top freshman in FCS a season ago, and he's only bettered himself this year. In what ways, Jay? Uh, uh, when to run the football. You know, we got things that can show you the <laughs> arm strength. We know about the accuracy. But the leadership has really shown that way. So he's really become a complete quarterback. As a freshman, I mean, this is just a 19-year-old who just turned 20. So in the age of all these older kids, he's a young guy getting better before our eyes. We talk about Shadur Sanders. What does he bring to the table? Look at the velocity, ball speed. That's arm strength right there. And then the ability to say, you know what? I'm going to take off and run, not just run. He's touching almost 20 miles an hour. That's wide receiver type speed right there from the quarterback position. The total package, and what I really like, he's an edge-of-your-seat type guy. When he's in shotgun formation and he gets the ball in his hands, you always feel like something special is going to happen. Oh, the pressure, he avoids it coming in from the blind side. And Shadour Sanders gets everybody out of their seat for Jackson State. He's into the end zone. They want to fire it up, Jay State, fire it up. After that seven-yard scamper from Shadour Sanders. Nice move. Hit him with the old John Elway, we used to call it. Spin move out the back door. And you practice stuff like this. This is what you practice escaping for. 
You see him, you recognize him, give me the spin, nobody outside, foot race to the end zone, getting up to 19 miles an hour. We talked about the speed. And look at that. Oh, he wants it. Good football player, too. And Jackson State regaining the lead as we take a look at today's performance update prepared by Tax Act. Sensational so far for the sophomore QB from Jackson State. Only one incompletion, two touchdowns, and of course he just helped himself with his legs to put his team back up. And how accurate were our scout reports? You know, we talked about Shador Sanders, accurate with his arm, doesn't miss passes, not missing the day 13 to 14. The improved athleticism, we've seen it on display now running. Davius Richard on the other sideline. Mr. Everything from there, running, catching, throwing. This is a big time matchup between two powerhouse programs. Oh, we're in for a good one. Well, Shador Sanders and talking with him throughout this season saying, hey, look, everyone is feeling good, leaner, stronger, quicker. Coach Prime brought in the new strength and conditioning coach this summer, Maurice Sims, and had a great effect on the team. He said, you know, Shador's like, look, I'm feeling lighter when I run. I'm feeling more loose when I'm back there in the pocket, and we've seen him take advantage of his legs. Not only just a great passer, but he talked about that added dimension for who hopes to be a future NFL quarterback. And so his father, Coach Prime, you see their interaction. Shadour Sanders saying, look, I got this. They call him grown, okay? Yeah. They say I'm grown, and you saw the maturity saying, look, I got this, that. Not only that, this is what he's been prepped and primed for. Shadour said, I'm playing for my dad. I decommitted from one school, followed him to Jackson State so I can be a pro, just like my father. And he's got all the tools there. I mean, everybody asks me wherever I go, hey, is he that good? I mean, the answer is yes. He, he's that good. You know, I was fortunate enough to make the NFL when I was 19, 20, was not that good. He's been coached and groomed for the role, and no moment ever seems too big for him. So now Jackson State looks to go into the locker room with a 21-17 lead over North Carolina Central. And look, both of these teams have been trading blows. We brought the coaches out just like it was a heavy yeah. fight. And both teams performing up to that level. Shadour, they're seeking a cricket celebration bowl win. Kevin Coleman back to receive it. Here on the return from inside his own five-yard line and here bottled up around the 20 or so yard line. And we saw some chippiness at the beginning of the game and maybe we may see more as the next two quarters unfold as we take a look at today's game track brought to you by Cricket. Shadour Sanders has been absolutely fantastic getting it done through the air and on the ground. Not only that, Davius Richard matching his gangster on the other side. And both teams go through this offense. You know, they go through the offense on all cylinders there, so that's what you have to do. And who's going to make the big plays? And really want to give a shout-out to Shadour Sanders, the way he ended that half, not allowing his team to go into the locker room trailing. You said that was going to be a critical drive as they took the lead before the half, and, and, and what have you seen throughout this season for Shadour Sanders to step up in those big moments? You said not getting rattled. Yep, not getting rattled, and, and part of that goes the defense. You know, the defense is not getting to him. If you let him throw from his mark, he can hurt you in so many ways, and right now we're seeing Jackson State go to a little tempo. They've caught North Carolina Central and a defensive look they don't like, and they're attacking. You see 
moving very quickly. First and 10 from the 45 on the carry is Savion Wilkerson. Well, I'll tell you this, we came in asking questions about how would Jackson State block out the distractions, both externally and internally? How have they thus far in your mind done in that category? Uh, they play football. I mean, they're the number one team in HBCU football, number five ranked in overall FCS football for a reason. They've got better players than most of their opponents. They've got athletes. They've got swag. They've got great coaching, a complete football team. And once they make it to all about them and they're playing for each other, then you've got a deadly team right there on a mission. The pressure and Shador Sanders trying to escape and get away. Penalty marker coming out near the 36-yard line. As the pocket was caving in and collapsing, Ja'Kai Brevard among the maroon jerseys. Probably be a holding call on Jackson State offensive line. Talk to me, Billy D. Give it to me, Billy D. <laughs> Our official <laughs> Billy D. Williams is his name. I love that. Personal foul. Illegal hands to the face. Number 79 offense. That pulley's decline. Result of the play. Third down. You hear how Billy D came in smooth to give you that call. We'll tell you about the college football playoff semifinals Saturday, December 31st. That's New Year's Eve on ESPN and the ESPN app. Number two, Michigan taking on number three, TCU, in the Verbo Fiesta Bowl at 4 Eastern. Then it's the defending national champion, Georgia Bulldogs, and the fourth-ranked Ohio State Buckeyes in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Here's the play on January 9th and throwing it away, feeling the pressure from the backside. Well, that was Jaden Flaker getting to Shador Sanders one of the few times today. Getting some pressure on him. But can we go back to Billy D? Let's talk about <laughs> Billy D. Billy D. Williams, the actor, right? I remember when he played in Bingo Long All-Stars, right? Baseball mm -hmm. movie with about the Negro oh, League, Richard Pryor, but also Brian Song, story by Brian Piccolo. And what about what about what about Star Wars? And what about okay? Work, I know Star Wars. What about it works every time? Colt forty five pitch man. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, Jay. You got that one. We, we can't we can't talk about no more. <laughs> no. <laughs> Codrington signals for the fair catch. Forty two yard punt. And the ball down at the 13-yard line. Well, Davius Richard and the North Carolina Central offense. Pitch man. Speaking of, hey, the pitch man, you talked about Billy D. Back in the day, how about one of the four Pro Football Hall of Famers out of Jackson State, Walter Payton, the first to greet the Wheaties cereal box. Sweetness. First player. You, you have sweetness. to say sweetness. Oh, yeah. One of the best nicknames of all time. Sweetness. Dr. Doom, Robert Brazil might Great say, too. hey, look, I'm going to challenge you there. Oh. Jeremiah Brown coming from Got the back side, getting it away. Latrell call you with some space. Let's sit it down quickly. What's going on, Tiff, down on the sidelines? Hey, guys. I spoke with Coach Oliver at halftime, and he told me his message to the team at the break was that we can't keep killing ourselves. There are too many penalties, and offensively, they have three that cost them 35 yards, so it stalled them on a couple of drives there. But he said they haven't stopped us. They keep stopping themselves, and he wants them to clean things up this half. All right, thanks so much, Tiff. And, and, and what did he tell us this week about this group? Hey, look, we don't have any stars are just going to overpower you but we've got a group of really good players that put together and assemble this great eagles team that have won the MIAC and now trying to capture their first ever cricket celebration bowl title and he tells me that and every time he says it i said i'm not listening to you coach because what i see right there number 11 davis richard is a star <laughs> show me a quarterback with his productivity his athleticism and you've got a star now the people around him, the personnel around him, may not be as great as he is, but Davis Richard, one of the premier players in all of FCS football, the green-eyed bandit, is a star. When you think about his freshman year going four and eight, but he has progressed and elevated just as this program has last year going seven and five, and now nine wins on the season. And the conference player of the year on offense out of the BN. 
Richard staying alive, scrambling, getting it away, and throwing it out of bounds. And catch Pro Coach Prime making that nice catch on the sideline. Still has the hands. Right. There's a reason the why he played DB and wide receiver. The pressure getting to Richard. And now, let's see. I'm trying to see. Does he look like a wide receiver or is that an outfielder? That's wide Ooh. receiver. <laughs> <laughs> he made it look easy. <laughs> He's like, I didn't even have to move position. I'm going to just extend. Third and eight. Coming up. Look at this man-to-man -man across the board. Quarterbacks looking at the wide receivers. Little safety help. Look how many white jerseys they have crowding the line of scrimmage. Getting it away. Pass complete. And Quentin McCall catches it, but he's short of the marker. All right. So after the catch by Coach Prime, did he do? Oh, no, he didn't. Yes, he did. He said he gonna tell you eight toes down. He was able to still do a little prime time move. You know, and if it weren't such a close, serious game, we probably would have got the shuffle. Yeah. <laughs> but right now, he's focused on trying to secure this victory. Fake. Oh, they got him. And the Eagles fans standing up. That's scouting. Give a shout out to your special teams coach on that one there. Thomas Carroll doing a good job knowing the look he was going to see. They got the look they wanted and they executed to perfection. One block away from taking that to the house. Cal Morgan did his thing. The tight end out of Holly Springs, North Carolina, getting all kinds of love on the sideline. And we talked about blow for blow in this ball game, and North Carolina Central coming out swinging. And, and that hurts. You know, as a defense, you think you do your job, you force the team to punt, and special teams let you down. And now the defense is back on the field, and he needs some oxygen just from the celebration. Everybody wants to come up to him and talk to him. He's like, I just want to breathe, man. <laughs> <laughs> Give me 30 seconds, and I'll talk to you. Can I get a water break or something? But you see the resolve of this North Carolina Central team feeling very confident in their game plan and what they've been able to do here today. Quarterback sweep left coming. You called a Jay waiting for the blockers, but Aubrey Miller and the defense from Jackson State was prepared. And, and they're setting them up. They're setting them up. So once the team reacts like that, when you do a certain shift and you get the look you want and you run the play and they stop it, well, as an offensive coordinator, I've got something to combat that. I've got something I'm going to try and bait them on somewhere in the football game this half. We saw some trick plays with a double pass and Davius Richard catching that touchdown back in the first half. Four. Just trying to find a little He's silky strong. smooth lane, and that's what Davius Richard does. And that's going to be maybe just short right, of I that first down marker. I thought he got. Yeah, he got the a forward bad spot. Lane. Yeah, they're, they're trying to say where does he start the forward progress, and that's that's a mm, that's a tough one. Anytime you get tackled going forward, you have to wonder why they're taking liberties to say that. He was engaged with somebody. He's running through a tackle. Uh, yeah. yeah. He wasn't giving himself up. He was trying to get the yardage. Tough positioning, fourth and one. The lean up ahead. Do they give it to him? Good serve. Does he get it? Good sir. And I'm, you know, we, we call like we see it. But you want the game to be settled on the field with the players. So I'm kind of happy to see them get that first down because I think we all thought they clearly got it on the previous play there. So the ball bounces out and it works out. I was going to say, one of those instances where the ball doesn't lie. <laughs> now, had he been stopped, <laughs> it would have been a whole different ball game. But 
let's see how they do on this job. You talk about what you say North Carolina Central is in red zone offense. They always end in points, basically, almost like 90% point ratio. So things are looking good for the Eagles right now on this drive. Your quick burst through the hole down to knock about the 11 yard line. Coming up next on ABC, we'll have two more bowl games for you. Washington State squares off against Fresno State in the Jimmy Kimmel LA Bowl, presented by Stiefel. And then at 7.30 Eastern, SMU, the Mustangs, taking on the Cougars of BYU in the New Mexico Bowl. Both games are also on ESPN Cortez and the ESPN app. And when I see Washington State right there, maybe think about some, take a point of personal privilege. Uh, we lost a great one, Mike Leach. Coached at Washington State, Mike Leach, the current head coach of Mississippi State. Prayers go out to his family there. He loved the game of football. You see that ball? <laughs> Ricocheted off the official. They thought it, it was really on the field. Is there, you is have to be careful. Andre Miller's in the vicinity. He's a disruptive spot. tackler. Third down. Central fortunate. Look, look how strong. We talk about the strength of Richard. Able to complete that pass while going down. And I told you when Miller comes over, he's trying to do bad things, man. Bad things. The player who who has definitely matured since his time at Jackson State. Spent the first part of his career at Missouri. Critical. Third and eight. In CCU. Gunslinger into the end zone as the catch a touchdown. touchdown. Yes, Quentin McCall comes up with it. Did that ball get there in a hurry? And the catch by McCall left his feet, but located, watch the back leg. He knows it's a tight window, he jumps, and you're gonna see that foot come down right now. Knew the hit was coming, put the foot down early before he could get knocked out of bounds. He's gonna force that ball down right now. Foot's down, shuts down before Shiloh Sanders can get there. That's a football play right there. Indeed. They may take on the another field. look at it, Jay, of a touchdown just to see review. if he did come down with the ball inbounds and have possession. And it looked like it from both angles. We just showed you another look here. Yeah, watching it live, I saw him force that foot yep. down early. Yep. See, that ball, as soon as he caught it, he put it down early. Knee and foot, he knew contact was coming. Sanders was coming over to do what you're supposed to do, knock him out of bounds. But it was a good job by McCall, knowing where he was on the football, and he rushed that foot to the ground. That's why I knew it was a touchdown immediately. He got foot and knee, and this is going to stand. Quite possibly could be a quick review, but let's go back to the athletic ability oh, of there. Quentin McCall right there. Look at that, that right there. Oh, yeah. He's got, he got them both. He got deuces. That's a great football play. Ball doesn't move at all. I mean, that was a gorgeous catch. Tight window to throw that football. I mean, you see how close that window is between the safety and the cornerback? If you're late with that throw by half a second, that's not a touchdown. He would have been knocked out of bounds. The presence of mind from After the review, sophomore. it's been determined the receiver caught the ball, had a knee down, results a touchdown. Easy there, but to high point the football, have the control coming down to the ground and be able to get both, as Billy D just told us, the foot and the knee down. All spark, give credit to Coach Oliver. The special teams, the fake punt, kept the drive alive and helped the Eagles regain the lead. Missed it. Missed extra point. Oh. Guys, with North Carolina Central taking the lead on that McCall touchdown, he is still hyped up after that play, walking around on the sidelines shouting, I'm him, I'm him, getting some pats on the backs from his teammates, guys.
Storytelling is at the heart of everything we do at the Walt Disney Company, and people are at the heart of our stories. Dreamers, Imagineers, creators, doers. The power of our stories is unleashed only when the people who tell them reflect the rich diversity of our world. Marching alongside HBCUs, Disney on the Yard is committed to empowering black people. North Carolina Central, we mentioned earlier, they've been in this cricket celebration bowl before and they lost by one point on a block extra point. Championship game, there was no rush there. That was just a miss. Gathers it around the nine yard line and Kevin Coleman is quickly brought down. We will step aside as well. Come back with the Shadour Sanders and the offense for Jackson State. will be on the field. Get into the call. During the return, holding return team number 82. 10 yard Cody for the spot of the foul. First down. Media. Right. The Cricket Celebration Bowl on ABC is brought to you by Tax Act. File for less and get more. And Capital One. What's in your wallet? North Carolina Central 2 for 2 on 4th downs, including this Kyle Morgan 43 yard fake punt. You see the moves. That Kyle was putting on him, and then afterward, you had to relive it. You, bro, you see what I did? See what I did? I hit him with that, uh, and then I gave him boom, and then bam, uh. <laughs> I love all these sound effects. Keep on giving it to me, Jay Walker. <laughs> Jackson State back on offense, and we'll see if they have an answer. Rico Powers, first time he's been targeted this afternoon, pickup of nine. And you know who's been quiet? Rico Powers has really emerged late. For Jackson State late in the season came in and they kind of knew they were going to start using them transferred in from South Carolina but but Dallas Daniels that is Shadur Sanders number one target Central's done a pretty good job of keeping him quiet today look for them to try to get the ball in the hands of Mr. Daniels well Daniels who you can find him anywhere on the field oftentimes lining up in the slot Look out. Watch out. This is not going to be easy. I said easy. Whoa. No, no. No. Pushing them back on third and one. And then the reason why, I felt like you don't do hurry up against a team that's winning the battle of the trenches. You're only gained like a yard the previous play. Mm. Well, you saw the intensity on the face of defensive coordinator Courtney Cord who said, look, we've got a couple of undersized and young linebackers and Ja'Kai Brevard and Max Uren, but they have grown up this season and they made those two big stops on those last two plays and Jackson State has to punt it away. <laughs> Codrington, who was a dangerous return man, tried to make the over-the-shoulder catch. And he's trying to find some running room and then leveled Special by Gerontae <laughs> Davis. Kick coverage, those guys think a little bit different. <laughs> well, when we come back, folks, Jackson State on defense, their head coach, Deion Sanders. Oh, we, how we come back from break after? Mmm, lots said. Meanwhile, lots to say about that throw from Davius Richard to E.J. Hicks. Hicks, the fifth-year senior out of Roseville, North Carolina, the granddaddy of this group. And, and here's how you play the quarterback position. As a quarterback, if you got a big reward downfield, you will get hit. He knows he's going to get hit. Just let me get this throw off, please. Good job dropping the dime there, knowing he was going to get hit, standing tall and strong in the pocket. We've seen the electrifying speed of E.J. Hicks and after that 35-yard reception, ball on nice the 30. Cut. And nice Jamari cut. Jamari Taylor still on his feet. Oh, he says, I'm ready to truck him. Oh, Keep moving him look forward. At this. And look, the power look, keeps look. going forward. The physicality. Move something. You got to move something. Get up, get out, 
and get something. You know what? We in the A, right? Yes. You remember Ludacris? What he said? Move. Get, get out the way. way. What? Get, get out the way. way. Yeah, get oh, out the way. Push the pile right here. Look at the yards after contact. Great jump cut. Keep the legs trailing. I'm going down. Where my home is at? Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, man. <laughs> That's football. First and goal, Jamari Taylor gets it again. Once more, plowing forward. And Jay, we've talked about how successful North Carolina Central has been in the red zone this season. Today is no different. Touchdowns on three of their four trips here in the red zone. Matt Leone has a balanced attack, a nice mixture of run and pass, 208 on the ground, 176 through the air. Davius Richard has been leading the charge for his troops. They're going to run Richard right here. Oh, oh, oh. And then afterward, Jeremiah Brown heard the whistles but still decided to lay a shot. How do you not call that Cody? False start. Offense. Number 71. Five yard Goldie remains second down. Thomas with the false start. We knew the penalty was coming. Everybody did. But look at that. Uh, cheap oh, cheap shot there from Even Jeremiah his teammate. Look, 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 watch the head snap here. Even his teammates are like, what are you doing, man? You can't do that. He got away with one there. And Brown's a really good football player, but not a smart play. And we'll see what happens from that point forward. Because you know they want to protect their quarterback, the green-eyed bandit who helped get them here. Under two minutes to go in this third quarter. They still call Richard's number. And it tripped up and balled down. It's Jeremiah Brown who was making the play. And and I mean, look at this is the one. Officials time. He had time. He heard the whistles. Offensive injuries. Yeah, you, you have to make that call. I mean, he's mad at his tackle for moving, but. The officials, you have to protect the quarterback. On, on a shot like that, how is that missed in this type of football game? See, this is championship football. Move the ball back five yards. If they'd had those five yards back, that Davis Richard run just now would have been a touchdown. Now, passing situation. Right here, make one quick read. And if you don't see anything you want, take off running. At about the four-yard line, John Huggins coming in to make the tackle. And so now fourth and goal and the kicking unit coming on. How big was that pillow? Mm -hmm. And what did Trey Oliver tell our Tiffany Blackman? coming out of the locker room. Look, penalties have hurt us. We got to yes. stop shooting ourselves in the foot. No give me here, considering he missed an extra point from around the same distance. 21-yard attempt for Olivo. Hold is down. Kick is up, and it's good. So Central extends their lead. They're up by a score with 23 seconds remaining here. In the third quarter, remember our bowl coverage continues on ESPN with Florida taking on number 14, Oregon State, followed by Rice and Southern Miss. And then you got to cap things off with that Frisco Bowl presented by Serve Pro North Texas and Boise State at 9.15. Available also on ESPN app. Okay. Jay Walker, Tiffany Green, Tiffany Blackman down on the sideline. If you're just tuning in, folks, what's at stake? Well, an HBCU National Championship on the line. A perfect season for Shadour Sanders and Jackson State. They're looking to remain clean all the way in in Coach Prime's final game at Jackson State. Meanwhile, North Carolina Central, this gritty bunch out of the MEAC, who has history on their side, the conference 5-1 in Cricket Celebration Bowl games. The Eagles 
trying to return the hardware to Durham for the first time. A great team, you know, great team with a star at the quarterback position. And that's why they're in the position they are right now with the lead. But a lot of football left to be played. Kevin Coleman, some excitement as a great return from Coleman. Just about the 45 yard line for the SWAC freshman of the year. A big return man. And one of those targets that Shadur Sanders says, hey, I've enjoyed watching him grow and develop. The kid is turning in to a man. Key for Jackson State, you need Shadur Sanders, your best football player, to be on the field. Central with these long drives, converting. Jackson State with a couple three and outs, not getting first downs. He hasn't been on the field much in this half. Sanders going deep has Rico Powers. And the pass incomplete. Let's take a look at who's bringing the flavor today. Brought to you by McDonald's. We've seen some big plays in this one, Jay Walker. Big plays on the football field. Flavor is in abundance down here in Atlanta. They put a little extra season on it when you're talking about coming down south, some southern cooking. What a football game. Oh, yeah, we had a chance to check out Pascal's, one of the staples here in Atlanta yesterday. Got to make this tackle. Santee Marshall, and they do the Great open field tackle. Both Cole Jones and then helped out by Jawan Hudson as we come to the end of the third That's quarter. That's the end of the third quarter. So much on the line. Coach Prime knows it. Hey, this is a look at us yesterday getting that good fried chicken and fish and mm, wee. So good, baby. It's hard to feel alive. To rock the house. On third and seven, Trey Oliver saying it's incomplete on one side. The line judge on the other says yes, and they move the chains. That's how you play quarterback. He knew he was going to get lit up, and they're trying to go real quick right now, so they couldn't look at that if it was a catch or not. Take a look, see if that's a catch. We know he's going to get hit standing in front of it. And that ball moved. That was not a catch. But that's the headsy play of Shadur Sanders getting everybody quickly up to the line, snapping the ball. And now, first and 10, J.D. Martin picked up another one. He's in the ball game. And Sanders decided to tuck it. Penalty flag comes out. What happens so often when a quarterback escapes from the pocket? Holding. You lose containment. Oh, man. Billy D, brother man, got to find that hat, Parker. And I will tell you, People on social media have been telling me I left out Billy D. Williams' favorite movie. My mama sent me a text. She said, how are you going to leave out Ooh. Lady Sings the Blues? Oh, yeah, with Diana Ross. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Sorry. yeah. Okay. My mom hit me up. My athletic director, my alma mater, hit me up with that one. So, <laughs> yes, Billy D's Lady Sings the Blues. Serious business, Jay. Serious <laughs> business, man. We're trying to work this out here. The two fouls on the play. Holding offense. That 10 yard throw will be assessed from the previous spot. After the play, personal foul, late hit, defense. That 15 yard throw will be assessed from the enforcement spot. Automatic first down. The late hit. Let's see. I mean, oh, that's Max Uren as Sanders gave down. himself up. Yep. They called him, they're calling that tight because mm -hmm. they call one on when Davis Richard got hit in the first half. They call one just now when Shador Sanders got hit in the second half. Yeah. 
So Jackson State, first and 10. Pass underneath and it's complete to Shane Hooks, the senior out of Orlando. Second team all SWAC selection. Pick up of just two. Now take a look now. You see the images there of the offenses. They look alike. 38 points a game is phenomenal on any level of football there. They get it done in the air as well as on the ground. You see, they've been rewarded. But right now, they're trying to sneak Travis Hunter in the slot for North Carolina Central. Sorry, for Jackson State. That's Hunter right there. Keep an eye on him. They don't use him in the game to be a decoy. They call him a generational talent and looking his way the entire time. Shadour Sanders with double cover. Meanwhile, they left the man wide open. Throw behind Rico Powers. And it's incomplete. Missed opportunity there. So much attention paid to Travis Hunter. Yes. They left Rico Powers open. And because Hunter's a guy they want to go to, and we knew that Shadour was going to try and give him the football, he's going to run a corner route. But watch him take the safety, and the corner's going to say, oh, no, no, I know where you're trying to go. And they don't pass off. That's a mistake by Manny Smith. You're supposed to pass him off to the cornerback and get in the middle of the field. Shadour Sanders with an untimely miss, which does not happen often. One for five on third downs. Need eight yards to convert. Rolling, rolling, still looking down the field. Pass complete. He finds his tight end. That's DJ Stevens. Caught a touchdown earlier, and some laundry flies out at the end of the play. But a first down. When the pass rush does not get there, Sanders stays calm and finds an open receiver to pick up the first down and maybe a face mask after the catch. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense, number 45. That's all the assess half the distance to the goal from the end of the run. Automatic first down. Well, don't panic. And that missed tackle right there, along with the face mask, keeps the drive going for Jackson State. Coming in a little bit high. That's a tackle you have to make and grabbing the face mask from DJ Stevens. Jukai Brevard, the guilty party, aiding this Jackson State drive. Wilkerson trying to power ahead on first and goal. And again, this is why they want a player like Savion Wilkerson, why he was able to join this Jackson State team and make impact is the fact that he's going to be able to run downhill and try to punch it in, power it in. Now, in this situation here, I'm going to put Travis Hunter down here and look at the attention he gathers there. Go to the top. Use him as a decoy. You got safety corner help there. Go to the top. Flood that part of the zone. Still looking, looking, and finally getting to Shadour Sanders. Bringing him down. That's DeAndre Brown. Second sack of the ball game for NCCU. This is how you rush a quarterback, a dual threat quarterback. You keep him in the pocket. This is a controlled pass rush. You're not getting outside. Okay, you want to step up and go inside? They're spying, nowhere to go inside. That is great assignment football by the defensive line. Don't get too anxious and go for the sack, trying to go inside. Keep him in the pocket, and you got the sack anyway. They're drawing in the end zone. Time Coach out. Prime begging for a timeout. That's a loss of 15 on that play from the junior out of the Bull City. So the Tigers will talk it over. We'll step aside and take a break. The national champions, but they hold on to that title for just another hour or so on third and goal. Sanders to Travis Hunter. Touchdown, Jackson State. I, I tried to give him the secret, didn't I? They put him in the game for a reason. You know, they don't like to use him as a decoy, so they flank him out. Double slant combination, double post combination. When you do that, you know you're going to get one-on-one -on -one with the cornerback responsible, Hudson, for the deep third and the accurate throw again. And I don't know what that is, but it looked good. <laughs> 
for two here, Jay. Remember that missed extra point from North Carolina Central could come back to bite him. The pressure, pressure, and going down. A failed two-point conversion, Ja'Kai Brevard. So leaving some points on the field. Central standing strong on that point after attempt. The two-point conversion fails. JHU still on top by one. The Bowl on ABC is brought to you by Cricket Wireless. Smile, you're on Cricket. In part by McDonald's and Disney on the Yard. Visit DisneyOnTheYard.com. Count them up. Four Pro Football Hall of Famers from Jackson State. They helped to build the momentum for this Tigers program under W.C. Gordon back in the 70s. Their heyday was in the 80s and it spilled over into the 90s. Meanwhile, if you're just tuning in, Jay Walker, Tiffany Green, Tiffany Blackman, a one-point ball game, HBCU National Championship on the line between Jackson State and North Carolina Central. Crucial series for North Carolina Central right now. You got to keep Jackson State, Sonic, Boom in the South, their band. You need to keep them quiet because they're ready to fire up. Brandon Codrington was able to bounce off that tackle and keep on moving as we check it in the studio with Kevin Agandi. Good afternoon, Tiffany. Time now for this Disney on the Yard studio update. Wasabi Fenway, Bowl, Louisville, Cincinnati interim coaches. So what do you do, bud? Spread them out, Kevin. Run the football, Louisville. Almost 300 yards rushing on the day. Jawar Jordan, 41 yards. He had two touchdowns. And Louisville wins 24-7 in Boston. Coming up later on tonight in L.A., the Jimmy Kimmel L.A. Bowl. Jake Hayner, Fresno State, Washington State after the Cricket Celebration Bowl. Back to you, Tiffany and Jay. Thanks so much. Well, we are expecting a fantastic finish here. Just over 11 minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Luki Collier on the carry. And Collier brought down by Cameron Silman Craig and a penalty marker out. And hold will likely go against North Carolina Central. Holding offense. Number 76. 10 yard penalty for the previous spot. Replay first down. Hey guys, Mookie Collier just finished a run on that drive, and he told me that he wears number five for a very special reason to honor his friend Tony Webster, who passed away suddenly from a brain aneurysm when they were in high school. He said that number motivates him to do my best and take full advantage of my opportunity. Well, thanks so much, Tiffany. And what a compelling reason to wear the number five for Mookie Collier. He's done well by his friend and former teammate. Davius Richard, meanwhile, on the carry. Jalen Hughes coming in to deliver the blow on that four-yard run. And this is kind of similar to the first half where Central got penalties on first down that really almost killed drive. You're talking... When it's first and 20, your chances of converting are very slim. And once again, they come out first play, penalty, now they're behind the sticks. Get it away, there's Collier. And Collier tripped up by Jeremiah Williams. That'll bring up third down. And an eagle slow to get up on the field. For player injury. Zai Simpson, the left guard, one of the most experienced guys up front. Currently in pain and getting tended to by the trainers. Well, during this time, we already told you about the Pro Football Hall of Famers from Jackson State. But, Jay, a staple anytime that we're together, your Gimme Five. Jay's Gimme Five, and we're going to have Tiff's two cents. These are the top five HBC wide receivers of all time. Beat that list. Jerry Rice, the GOAT of all time. Bullet Bob Hayes, Florida A&M. John Stallworth, Alabama A&M from the Steelers win the Super Bowl. Harold Carmichael, six foot nine inch wide receiver, all-time leading receiver in Eagles history. And Charlie Joyner from Grambling State played for Eddie Robinson. That list right there is tight. On the bubble, I'm going to put Jimmy Smith because I think Jimmy Smith from Jackson State should be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Whoa. What you got, Tiff? Your two cents. 
I mean, what are we doing? Playing basketball, we're doing a little football. All five of those on the list, Jay, Pro Football Hall of Famers. I'll give you my two cents real quick. Okay. Okay. Donald Driver. Donald Driver from Alcorn from State Alcorn University. Alcorn State didn't make your list, but he made mine. And my other cent, if you will, come on, who do you think it's going to be? Ah, John, John Taylor. Taylor. Yeah. See, he John, did his thing at Delaware State. John Taylor played with Jerry Rice, mm -hmm. right? At, and it was like, yep, yeah. and it was like John Stallworth played with Lynn Swan. With Lynn Swan. Mm -hmm. So both of them very good and. You know, one's I had. You know me. I'm a little jealous and envious. Stallworth has the gold jacket, <laughs> Pro Football <laughs> Hall of Fame, where John Taylor didn't quite get it, but deserving of one. Zai Simpson had to be helped off. Third and eight. Tons of protection, and the pass is complete to Quentin McCall. The question yeah. is, where do they spot it? And they say a couple of yards ahead of the chains and a first down. And one of the times I'm going to question Jackson State on defense, you like to bring pressure. you got a backup guard in there because Zai Simpson just left the game. They went with the three-man rush, so the backup guard that came in, Noel McKinney, had nobody to block. I would have put some pressure on him right there. At least clean. <laughs> McKinney, the true freshman coming into this position out of Duncan, South Carolina. We'll see if that's a weakness that Jackson State will try to exploit the remainder of the game as Collier on the carry tried to escape but could not get away from Devontae Davis. That was a big time tackle by Davis because there was room to the daylight. Collier was going to bounce. There were no white jerseys outside of the trenches. A great individual effort by Devontae Davis. Tackle for a loss brings up second and 12. Davius Richard, who has been Mr. Consistency all year long for North Carolina Central. Six straight completions from the junior signal caller. Decides to keep it himself, runs into Jeremiah Brown and others, and out to about the 45-yard line of the Tigers. This is getting close. Right. So a critical third down, and what do you think Matt Leone is going to draw up in this situation? Davis, Richard, make the decision. If you get zone, they're getting a lot out of their pre-snap. So if you get the zone coverage look, tell Davis, take a look, find somebody, pick it apart. If not, take off and run, because if they get this within fourth and one or two, you have to think they're going to go for it. Jackson State's coming out in their traditional look right now. Man-to-man -man coverage, they're going to try and confuse you at the line of scrimmage, so you have to call some type of crossing route right now. Here they come. They're charging. Richard gets it away, locks it up into the center. Yeah. And a flag coming out as Quentin McCall was covered by Shiloh Sanders. He was turned around trying to track the football. And a pass interference. Turned him around. And they scouted this. What you do is you, you throw the ball up with a lot of air and you tell your receiver, adjust, go pass find the football. Defense, number 21. 15 yard goal for the previous spot. Automatic. First down. You see the, the latter prime years post college 21 Shiloh dons that number of his father here at Jackson State and uh, Pops not going to be too pleased with that one you notice how long that ball hung in the air mm -hmm. that was by design mm -hmm. you know you're going to get hit drop back drop back and let the receiver go find it and he might have found it had he not been held critical penalty there The North Carolina Central handed it off to Mookie Collier, and Collier with a strong run to the perimeter. And Travis Hunter uh -oh. coming in, and yep, the same chippiness and shoving oh, and pushing that we saw in the pregame starting to pick up and, here in the final minutes. And, and the officials are losing control of this. I, I don't like this. You could have thrown two flags on that. At the end of the run, Travis Hunter's helmet came off. He clearly got up and pushed somebody. Clearly got up and pushed somebody and was allowed to stay. So this is at the end of the play. 
Helmet's off. Now watch this. That's a push. So you don't you come and do nothing else, and people are gonna come to his back. And you're not gonna stop for a defensive player helmet off. It's out a second down. Come on. Especially at this juncture of the ball game, every down, every play, so important. Hunter on the sideline and coaches corralling on both sides, but that's what you have to do. So Quinn McCall takes this playoff on second and one. And Carter, a little skirt, skirt. You like that, Dre? I was trying to, I was trying to pick up, you know, some of your sound effects. Skirt, 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 skirt. Yeah. <laughs> Make him go, and uh, I, I want to shout out Noah McKinney, number 62, the left guard coming in in place of Zy Simpson on this drive, has done a good job winning his matchups. They just ran the ball towards the left side. The true freshman from Duncan, South Carolina. Oh, he's from Burns High School. That's a high school powerhouse down there. No wonder. Four hundred and thirty-five yards of total offense for North Carolina Central in this one. Again, the balanced attack. They edged a little bit in favor of the run game where they've been successful. Two hundred and forty-two yards against the top run defense out of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Richard, 14 of 19, 165 yards and a touchdown. Getting that playoff just before the clock expired. And being dragged down by his jersey, Shiloh Sanders brings down Twan Flip. First time he's been targeted. First and goal. Well, coming this week on Sunday NFL Countdown, before he faces Tom Brady for the first time, how Joe Burrow has been influenced by the GOAT. Plus, Justin Herbert hits the field with Matt Hasselbeck. And all access inside Tyler Heineke's sneaker collection. Kick off your NFL countdown Sunday at 10 a.m. A little side step cut from Jamari Taylor, Devontae Davis, among others, meeting him there. You go back, Jay, to how important the miss. Extra point for Central, okay, earlier in this ball game. Then the failed two-point conversion on the last scoring drive for okay. Jackson State. One-point ball game and under five minutes to go here in the Cricket Celebration Bowl. And that's it right there. You see it on your screen. Couple of flags on the field. We've seen and, celebrations. And this is going to be big. Before. Yeah. If this is against Central, it's going to be huge. You know why? Because they're going to go for two. When you're up by five, you go for two. But you don't go for two if they're going to be on the 18 yard line. This is going to be interesting to see. And if it's Jackson State against them, Central's going to get the ball on the yard and a half line. Pretty easy to pick up a two point conversion. Result of the play is a touchdown. After the play, uh, flagrant, excuse me, flagrant personal foul number 42. By rule, he is ejected from the game. Well, now attempt to try. Wow, that goes against Jeremiah Brown, the starting defensive end for the Tigers. And we've seen him get up in the face of some central players early in this ball game. Got that cheap shot on Davis Richard. He'll be assessed on the kickoff. Yep, yep. They let him start getting away with stuff. You know, I thought earlier, throw some flags there, and you can tell him tone it down. But Brown got away with one early in the game. This time he got caught. And I would take the penalty now. You know, you have that option. You want to take it on the kickoff, or do you want to take it on the two-point? I'd take it on the two-point. 
let me get a yard and a half away unless there's something I'm missing, which they can't. But either way, we knew they were going for two in this situation. Big play right here. To extend the lead to a touchdown. Philly special. Got him. Got him. <laughs> Second receiving touchdown of the day. This one on a two-point conversion to Davius Richard. And the Eagles stretch out the lead. One score ball game here. What an impressive drive we saw from Central. Because they took nearly seven minutes off the clock with that drive in the NCCU Sound Machine. Ladies Benz Stadium. We've seen EJ Hicks, the Davius Richard, not once, but twice. You look at what happened there on that last play. So you're going to see the matchup here between Jeremiah Brown and Corey Bullock. So at that one there, Corey Bullock wins this battle. He finishes him off. So you see right there, plays over, right? No. Jeremiah Brown wants to take it to another level right here. You'll see it as he goes to the ground. Watch him when he gets up and takes a cheap shot on him. Easy call for the official. Brown's a great player. He got away with one earlier, got caught that second time, and cost his team some yardage, possibly. Jackson State will come out on offense and try to answer on this drive when we return. Pass is over on ESPN2. How about the NFL Commissioner, Roger Goodell? The Commissioner. Yeah, coming to support Jackson State. His nephew, a member of the Tiger football team, Charlton Goodell. Say, what's up, nephew? <laughs> <laughs> Normally you come there and you're kind of neutral, want to support HBCU game, but uh, it's family. You get a pass when it's all family. And we had some good things to say about HBCU football and, and some of the initiatives they're trying to do. Let's hope it's long-standing moving forward. Well, this has been a packed week since the teams landed here Wednesday. Awesome and event. Awesome events leading up for a fantastic bowl put together by Executive Director Please set the clock. John Grant. So four minutes, 12 seconds. 412, please. But now the final four plus minutes, at least of regulation of the Coach Prime era at Jackson State. Second consecutive season. They've made it to the dance. And the pass is complete and the shot delivered to Travis Hunter by Jason Chambers. So we'll continue to see more of Travis Hunter on offense. We at least expect to see that as Jackson State trailing by a touchdown. And they won't let you put Travis Hunter in a bottle. You ask him, is he better on offense or defense? He starts on defense, plays on offense when they need him, but you see he's just a natural. I mean, he has what you call, you know, football skills. He can attack the ball whenever it's in the air. He's a ball hawk on defense and able to run routes and it's the speed. Coaches just described him as a generational talent as Sabiana Wilkerson pushing forward. And look, you go back to what that Alcorn State game and dude was just sick with it. And then you think you back miss. to just this <laughs> pregame. He does this all the time. This is this is natural. This is easy to him. Good kid. Great football player. He's got those mitts. Generational talent. Decided to come to an HBCU and play for Coach Prime. Will this be his last game in a Tiger uniform? Important third and four right here for Jackson oh, State. Shadour Sanders wasn't ready for it, but still able to deliver the pass to Shane Hooks for the first down and across midfield. Whoa. Shadour Sanders covering up. For Zach Bro, that snap came, looked like nobody was ready. Definitely Sanders was not ready for this snap. The motion just started. Looking around and oh Good reaction there. And way to pick it up and get rid of it. Pick up the first down. Sanders getting out of the pocket. Slides. In a game of about four. This is the case of, but I wasn't ready. But hey. <laughs> 
Uh, and if that ball would have hit the ground, he wouldn't have had time to get rid of it. Kept this season going, hope alive for Jackson State with that recovery by Shadur Sanders. For defensive injury. North Carolina Central player down on the far side. It's Jawan Hudson. Coming up immediately following the conclusion of this game. Fans, you want to make sure you tune in to the ESPN app for the post-game trophy ceremony presented by Capital One. Again, immediately following the game. And Jay... I have to ask the question, obviously. Hey. You weren't doing any of this. Nope. In school. Nope. Shout out to the men of Omega Sci-Fi. Okay. They were found at where, Jay? Uh, America's <laughs> University. <laughs> America's HBCU Howard University That's is right. the alpha chapter, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> 1911. So, and, and, and whenever you hear Atomic Dog play, you know you're going to see the hooks and the hops. Part of the Divine Nine. Greek Pan Hellenic Council. And look, don't matter where you are on the field, you gotta have fun. Uh, in the split. Okay, with it and the hooks. But remember what we do. The impact, what it is all about. This is a part of the HBCU culture. We talk about it all the time, but the impact that the graduates have coming out of historically black colleges and universities. Jay, you and I are testaments to that. Doctors, lawyers, pharmacists, business leaders. Vice presidents, Supreme Court justices. Shadur Sanders, Jesse Malik, the fifth-year senior coming up with You'll a see. big hit. Uh, Malik's going to see it right there. And once you start getting this gap right here to the quarterback, they've got a spy right there, nowhere to go. Miss block up front. Malik comes through with a big play. Outstanding student athlete, originally immigrating from Kenya. Timeout, North Carolina Central, their first. And Jackson State spending their second timeout. For North Carolina Central, though, you look at the alumnus, Trey Oliver, as we take a look at today's chill performance brought to you by Coors Light. His crew got the job done, found their way into the end zone. Yeah, they got physical, establishing they could run the football behind the line, protect the quarterback, took advantage of a big penalty, and a good team's going to make you pay it. Collier having an impact on his game. If David Trish is going to be Batman, then Collier said, I'm cool being Robin. <laughs> well, Trey Oliver, it means so much to him. He says, I'm not only carrying North Carolina Central on my back, which I believe maroon and gray, but I'm also carrying the MEAC banner as well. Felt like the conference, his team coming in feeling a little disrespected or maybe the underdog, but he wanted this since we talked to him at Media Day back in July. You don't need to pick up all 18 yards here. You just need a positive play when you pick up more than 10. Good job. Now it's going to get interesting. You go for it here. You've got to go for it. Now was a good job. You needed the completed pass. Time out. Jackson State. And they're going to go. Oh, they're second. No, no, no. You got. You just came out of a break. You call two plays in anticipation that you're going to get a completed pass. You've got a minute 16 left. They tackle you in bounds, and you're trying to score. You don't need a field goal. You have to get to the end zone. You gotta value those timeouts a little bit more. Coming off of an injured prayer alert. Now I know this is a big play, but you talk about that on third down. Now check this out, North Carolina Central bringing their entire team onto the field. Courtney Core getting his defense prepared and ready for this fourth down. They're understanding the magnitude of this moment. They come up with a stop here, and they all but seal the deal. 
as HBCU national champions. For Jackson State, they still have one timeout to work with, but Brett Bartoloni has been able to distribute the ball around. Who will Shadour Sanders go to in this situation? If, if, if Travis Hunter's on the field, you're going to take a look at him, obviously, because they can't guard him one-on-one, -on -one, and that's why I don't believe North Carolina Central can play man coverage. But I would not allow, they're going with a three-man rush right now. See, I, I need more bodies around here. See, that, Shadour Sanders is a good enough athlete where he can hold it, hold it, hold it, and then take off and rush for it. North Carolina Central has one timeout remaining. Jackson State has one also. Big play. 34-yard line is the line of the game. Sanders with time, feeling some pressure, giving chase, going backwards. He gets it away, and it's complete. Wow! Wow! What a catch made! J.D. Morton out of the backfield, coming up with the all-important grab on fourth and seven. Oh, uh, but they're substituting Travis Hunter out the game. Valuable seconds are ticking away. You've got to hold it. When you make a substitution, you have to get defense time to substitute. They just lost 14 seconds. but not in bounds. Look at this, they had Chadour on the run, and that was the last play there. <laughs> He's being cool with it. <laughs> cool breeze, Coach Prime. You see how invested each of these coaches are in this ball game. Coach Prime, final game at Jackson State. You know he wants to finish out with a W, but they've got to put it into the end zone. Shadour Sanders looking down, quickly meeting Kevin Coleman is the cornerback, Brandon Codrington, but first down, clock will stop temporarily. And yeah, they're chasing him out of the pocket, but they're doing a good job on scramble drill. He's able to find somebody downfield. Now get up there and clock it right now. And Jay, you got to ask this question here. That, Coach Prime. That, that, now you need to be careful here. He clocked it, but the clock should start running. Unless there was a timeout called. And he started walking to the sideline. I'm curious as to who called the timeout. It appears Central? Jackson State. I think Billy uh, Williams think, might be trying to figure out the same thing. Uh, if Central didn't call timeout, then that clock should have been running. See, Shadur Sanders, see, they're calling him back. Shadur Sanders spiked the ball, right. which is fine, but the clock doesn't stop. It stops. The game clock stops, but the 40-second clock starts running. But but now Shadour Sanders is getting a little extra coaching from Brett I mean, if there's no, no coaching. Me. I mean, there's no timeout called here as... Oh my goodness. That's just who did they charge that time out to? And I, I don't, don't want to hear nobody. Yeah, well, oh I don't see goodness. anyone off the board. So poor management by the officials there because that now allows Shadour Sanders to have a quick conversation with his OC Brett Bartoloni. Time out. North Carolina Central, their final of the game. And so now, seconds and Central spins their final timeout. Yeah, I, I mean, tell you, he's going up there. Hey, let's clock it. Let's clock it. Let's clock it. Which is the right thing to do? You got the first down. The game clock's not moving. So once they set it, they're going to wind the game clock. So now that's going. You clock it. He walks over almost like it's a timeout. There's no timeout. Central players start walking that way as well. And they don't start the, the, the clock. And then they started to start it. And then they stopped it. Come on. That, well, that, that can't happen. Now, if you want to say, you know what, Jackson State, we're going to charge you with the timeout, then okay, but. All right, Jay. You know, everyone has to be thinking 
in their mind about Coach Prime, his final game. What if he comes out on the losing end for a second consecutive season in a national championship game? What do the folks in Boulder think? Oh. It, it, well, they got to think about it. I mean, he, he dominated the SWAT, but he couldn't dominate a team from the MIAC during his time there. So he doesn't want to leave any doubt. That's why he wants to finish this. And I'm going to tell you, there are a lot of people in the HBC world that don't want to see him leave HBC football with a W. Brings up third down. You don't want to be stuck one-on-one -on -one with Travis Hunter. In the bread basket, not able to secure the catch, and he's moving and didn't bring it down. But get out of that coverage. If you're North Carolina Central, look for Hollywood Hooks. Shane Hooks, number five, top of your screen. He's a guy, you get him a jump ball, he's got a five foot nine inch quarterback guarding him. He's six four, he can make athletic catches. Here comes the blitz. Jackson State able to pick it up, rolling out of the pocket, delivers, and it's incomplete. And right there amongst all the Eagles on the sideline, Shadur Sanders is able to pop up fourth and 10. DeAndre Brown was there to apply the uh, pressure. Fourth and 10 and got seven seconds. Woo. <laughs> when you talk to me about Coach Prime, mm -hmm. he wants to get this win. Mm -hmm. Right now, mm -hmm. he need daddy's boy to come up big for him right now. Can Shador bail out Pops and make a play? right now mentally that hurt you have the game won you're seven seconds away from achieving your goal your dream you let that slip away how do you rebound how tough is trey oliver's football team mentally he said we came in with a thermostat mentality set it on 68 and just be cool we'll see how his team responds in overtime from the 25 and lukey collier who's been great today in the backfield Pick up of about three. The champions out of the MEAC being tested, going toe to toe with the top team in HBCU football. Trey Oliver trying to bring it home. against Cameron Simmons Craig. That guy that makes it go for the defense. I mean, look at this. Look at that. You know, 
the best stiff arm of all time running back was who? Walter Payton Sweetness from the SWAT. Well, Mookie's showing you the MEAC boys have a little stiff arm action too. Fantastic run. Cut out. Jackson State. Jackson State spending the time out. Coach Prime all the way down on the 20. Not pleased, but the strong arm of Mookie Collier. Was going to outrun him to the corner. Silman Craig was gaining momentum. Mookie said, move. Not going to be denied on this one. All right, Jay, here, here's the deal. I don't know about y'all at home, but I'm feeling all of this right now. As announcers, this is what you want. This is what the buildup is for the season. How do you feel like this is playing out, just like the way you thought, right? Yeah, you know, this is such a good game. Carolina Central. Davius Richard trying to punch it in. Does he flip over just short? Just short. Ah, that was close. I mean, if they review everything, that's a potential scoring play. When he got hit sideways, he was on somebody's back. And then turned over. The ball might have been in the end zone. They're not going to look at it, but take, take a look at this. When he gets hit initially sideways, he's on somebody's back. Uh, elbow down. Elbow. Elbows down. I didn't see that. The surge ahead, and it's a touchdown. So Central got the ball first. Scores first in the overtime period. Let me, let me give it up. Okay, go ahead. I said I want to see how tough they were mentally. Mm -hmm. They showed how mentally tough they were marching that ball right down on that drive and scoring. Jay, can I give it up to you? What I, you said you felt something special about this game. Coming into today's game, the top yeah. two teams in HBCU football coming in with excellent records, fantastic seasons, and... Four quarters just wasn't enough. <laughs> Take a look at this extra point. We've had a missed one already. Olivo is able to put it through. Hey, look, this crew isn't complete without the third member of our team, Tiffany Blackman, down on the field. What have you observed? Guys, I just got back over here to the NCCU bench, and I'm looking at Davius Richard just getting pats on the back from his teammates as he's going to adjust that finger again, that left hand that he had surgically fixed a few weeks ago when he broke that finger in their final game, and he's toughing it out, guys. His coach told me at halftime he's a warrior, and he's definitely showing that in this game, but his teammates, again, gravitating towards him. Lots of smiles over here on this sideline. And Tiffany, you should be tired. <laughs> you, you thought like with seven seconds you were getting ready to I do a trophy presentation. <laughs> and you had to run from one sideline to the next. So hats off to you. I've been standing trying to pick a corner of a stand so I can either sprint one way or sprint the other. That's why you wear comfortable shoes in these games, guys. <laughs> No doubt, and again, you kind of think back to what was going to make the difference. You saw North Carolina Central missing the extra point earlier, and then Shador Sanders not able to convert on the two-point conversion. That led us to this overtime period tied at 34 all. Central scored. Now Jackson State has the ball into the hands of Dallas Daniels for the six-yard reception. What leadership, too, we've seen from each of these quarterbacks, right? We talked about the star power of them coming in, but also you have to credit the way that they've been able to make the plays necessary when needed. See, now Wilkerson trying to move the power for a couple. Yeah, you know, Coach Prime was one of those guys, big time players, make big plays in big games, and they were able to show that they were gonna be difference makers in this game leaving it all out here on the line. And these young men, both sides, blurred out the distractions, shut off the noise and played a great football game. Complete 
release it to DJ Stevens. Well, Jay, the support that we have seen from the fans throughout this season, the SWAC, we know the leading conference in FCS in attendance, obviously. The band's a big part of the football experience, but these fans have certainly been supportive of these programs and both the MEAC and SWAC conferences. Absolutely. This is becoming the go-to event on the HBCU football calendar. Quickly out. Oh, and how about Savion Wilkerson staying on his feet somehow? And down at the three-yard line. Wow, great job here. A little bit of a low throw. Well, he's got to catch that the first time. But look at the balance. After the hit, picks up an extra two yards. When you're down inside the 10, two yards, very valuable. Wilkerson lunging ahead. And Jaden Taylor, among others, in on the stop. I don't think they're going to be able to run for it. I think, you know, definitely not up the middle. North Carolina Central is kind of established. They're pretty stout. I'm sure it's the situation. For a defensive injury. Injured player down on the field. And you talked about the green-eyed bandit, Davius Richard. You said the one word you would use to describe him, strong. I'm going to go with calm. <laughs> I mean, dude is like cool breeze on the sideline. And he's been that way throughout the ball game. I mean, because he realizes, you know, until that whistle blows, and he's got a trophy in his hand, he's got to stay ready. I mean, he's got to stay the even kill. You know, probably the most even kill guy that I remember playing with, Warren Moon. Hmm. I mean, Warren Moon, when we call Moonshine, he was so calm, it was almost scary. <laughs> you know, never heard him raise his voice always, if, whether it was a touchdown or an interception or a penalty. That demeanor, and it's something special to have, that type of demeanor. And just think about the month of December that Davius Richard has had, right? So he goes to Vegas, wins the MEAC Offensive Player of the Year, first time out in Vegas. Five days later, he earns his degree. First person in his family to get a college degree, and he's going to start working on his master's. And now he finds himself in position to perhaps win an HBCU national championship. I'd say this month of December is quite all right. Not too bad being Davis Richard right now, the young man from... Bell Glade, Florida, where they grow the football muck. players. <laughs> Ja'Kai Brevard goes out injured to the sideline, and now on third and goal, the defense crowds the line. Shador Sanders looking to pass it. Finds his man, it's shot in and out of the hands of Hayden Hagler. Hagler, who only had a couple of catches this season. And down goes Hagler on that play. And this should have been a touchdown. He dropped it. Great job by Shador. But after all that said and done, Tiff, I've got two words. Fourth Travis. down. Oh, oh I just <laughs> Fourth down. And Travis Hunter is in the football game. Number 12. He got look, the play clock with just one second. It expired before he got it off. Shadur Sanders looking, looking, looking. And that's it. Ball game. North Carolina Central ascends to the top of the HBCU mountain. They are your 2000.